Is it possible to do well in college, work a part-time job, make friends, party occasionally, and have a social life? Exactly how I would do my freshman year if I were in your shoes. Dorming, roommates, one one That is the one thing that if I knew ahead of time, I probably would not have chosen UIUC. Hey guys, remember me? Welcome back to my channel. If you guys don't know me, my name is Kelly Tang. I am your not-so-local UIUC YouTuber who's kind of irrelevant already because I've already graduated, but today I am back with a part two to my college advice for UIUC freshmen. Welcome and congratulations to the class of 2025. I know I was supposed to make this video like over a month ago. I'm sorry. I hope it is not too late. Quick little intro about me. I graduated last spring in the May of 2020 with a degree in advertising and a minor in public relations. I briefly also minored in computer science, but I dropped that bitch real quick. So if you want to hear the story time about that, I have a whole video over here and actually a bunch of other UAUC related videos. But today we are just going to be doing a Q&A. So thank you guys all so much for your questions. Thank you for not leaving me hanging. I was a little bit worried about that. <laughs> Now, my favorite part of making these UAUC videos is just walking around campus, taking a nice peaceful stroll. So, in honor of this video, I decided to drive all the way down to campus to visit one more time, and here we are! Oh my gosh, it's such a beautiful day. I wonder if I'm gonna run into any of you guys here. First question is a really good one from Ariana. Is it possible to do well in college, work a part-time job, make friends, party occasionally, and have a social life? Girl, 100% yes. This is what college is all about. Prioritization and balance is extremely possible and a really important lesson for you to learn how to do when you're in college. Some semesters will be lighter or heavier than others. Obviously, some majors are gonna be lighter or heavier than others, but I promise you, there are enough hours in the day. You're gonna feel busy sometimes, but you do actually have enough time to do everything you need to do, and I'll tell you how. The best thing about college is that you don't really have to set aside time for your social life. Like, your social life is gonna be mixed into every single part of your day, which kind of leads me to a side tip. Always take classes with your friends. If you can, register for every single class that you have with at least one friend. It will make your life so much easier. If you want to get a part-time job, I would highly, highly suggest getting a desk job. So for my sophomore through senior year, I worked a desk job at Ace's library and it was literally the best job ever. I would just go there and I pick which hours I want to work by the way. And if I can't work a day, it's super easy to get the ship picked up. Every once in a while, they'll ask you to do some like computer related thing, but you don't have to be good at computers. They tell you exactly what you need to do. Most of the time, I'm just like studying eating. It's like a paid study hall. The pay isn't amazing, but I think it is above minimum wage, which is still better than a lot of the places that you could find, you know, working at like some restaurant on campus. But if you can't find a desk job because sometimes they can be kind of competitive, then just work somewhere with your friends. Next, if you ever have free time, you can always work ahead on your assignments so you're not overloaded later during like midterm season. Almost every single class, you know, you're going to get your syllabus and they tell you exactly what day everything is due when your tests start, like till the end of the semester. You get all the information from day one. That way, I always prefer to keep my weekends as free as possible so I can dedicate those days to recovering from my hangovers or just doing like super chill, easy, like mindless assignments. Next is just a general tried and true productivity tip. If it takes less than two minutes, do it right now. You'll notice, especially compared to high school, you have so much more time in college. Classes only meet two to three times a week instead of every single day and you can schedule out your own time. Even if you go to parties on the weekends, let's be honest, you probably weren't gonna be that productive on a Saturday night anyways. Plus, sometimes knowing that there's gonna be a social gathering at nighttime is a really good motivation for you to actually get your work done ahead of time. Also, when you're taking time to rest, actually rest. Your break time is not worth anything if you spend the entire time just quietly stressing about all the things that you need to do today. Compartmentalize those things in your brain, set aside for later, and just focus on recharging in that very moment. And lastly, one of the biggest lessons that I learned in college is to learn how to depend on other people. There's really no merit in trying to be a superhero, trying to do everything by yourself. If you're ever feeling overwhelmed, just ask for help. That's what friends are for. That's what these mental health resources on campus are for. I know your friends would be happy to pick up lunch for you or bring coffee to you when you're cramming for your midterm or even help you pick up some of the slack if you're working on a project for an RSO that you guys are both in. There's nothing wrong with asking for help. You should depend on other people. And through all these tips, that is how I was able to balance everything in college. Next question is from Hannah. I am a transfer student coming in as a junior. I really want to make the most of my experience at UAUC. What advice do you have for me? Also, how did you figure out how to navigate campus? I'm so bad at directions, lol. Girl, me too. I feel you have so bad at directions. Okay, for directions, just get to know the bus system as soon as possible. A lot of freshmen come onto campus and like, eh, man, I mean, I'll figure it out sooner or later, whatever. It's not really a priority right now. No. One, download the bus app. It will tell you exactly what bus you need to take and what time it will come. But just as a general rule, just remember that the 22 Illini, there's 22 North and 22 South, those just go all around campus. They only run on weekdays, but it will practically take you anywhere that you would possibly need to go. It might take you a while though, because it literally does stop everywhere. Some of the other buses will probably be faster once you figure out which ones will take you directly to your route. The most popular ones are gonna be the 12 Teal, 13 Silver, one Yellow. And also remember that all the buses eventually do go off campus. like. 
<laughs> so if you get on one and you don't know where your stop is, don't just sit there and wait because once you go off campus, it will take a while for them to loop all the way back out. Also, the way that the streets are named are actually make it pretty easy for you. So, <clears throat> center of campus, Green Street, Gregory Street. Green Street is where all the restaurants, bars, stuff like that is. Gregory Street is where the Ike, the six pack is. In between that is the quad. Everything over here is gonna be labeled 6th Street, 5th Street, 4th Street, 3rd Street, 1st Street. Wait, what? Everything within here is the main part of campus. North of Green Street, if you keep going, that's the engineering quad. You'll probably only ever go there if you're an engineer. <laughs> South of all that, off the map is where the dorms PAR and FAR are. So sorry if you guys get that dorm, it's really far away. But honestly, it's, it's a great dorm, it's just you need to learn the bus system. The majority of your classes are probably gonna be around the quad area on this side. Everything over here in this area is just apartments, frat houses, sorority houses, residencies. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. As for how to make the most of your experience, I'm going to actually loop this in with Unbroken Spartan's question. What are some good ways to make friends? Also, I'm majoring in journalism. Congratulations. What I'm about to tell you is probably a lot more specific than you were asking for, but I'm gonna tell you exactly how I would do my freshman year if I were in your shoes. Before you get to school, start doing research on some of the RSOs. Check out their social media, if you're interested in brushing Greek life, I would definitely try talking to some of the members of the organizations before you even get to campus. Then on quad day, assuming this is a regular quad day that is not affected by COVID, anything that even vaguely interests you, sign up for it, go to their info meeting, audition, interview, anything you have to do. If you don't like it, you can just quit. To make your life easier, I would definitely go early and research ahead of time so you know exactly which booths you want to go to because it can be very crowded and sometimes hard to find specific clubs if you're not looking because there's just so many. But of course, along the way, check out some clubs that maybe you didn't see online. Go to as many rush events as possible for different organizations just to check it out and meet people. Along the way, you're guaranteed that you're going to find at least one or two RSOs that you really, really vibe with. And what happens to most people is that those are going to be the clubs that you're going to stick with for all four years until you graduate and that's where you're going to meet all your lifelong friends. The reason you have to do this your freshman year and I don't know, people who are older can attest to this. There's this weird feeling that you get that like when you're a sophomore, you're like too old to join new clubs. And obviously that's not true. I mean, I join clubs even as a junior and senior, but it's just not the same. Everyone is like super, super desperate to find friends because they're like in this new place living by themselves for the first time. By the time you reach sophomore year or even sometimes freshman year, second semester, people have pretty much already found their friend group. So just join everything you can and see what sticks. I would definitely join some clubs where you can get a big because they'll spoil you, they'll take care of you, mentor you, give you advice, and also try to try Check out a variety of different clubs, you know, like social, professional, active, business, stuff that's related to your major. Get a good mix so you can start to meet people from all over campus. And from there, that's when this giant ass school is gonna feel a lot smaller and a lot more like home. Also, I did work a job my first semester freshman year, but I would wait until later on, at least second semester, to get a job. That way you can focus more about settling into campus and getting your bearings and everything. And then you can also kind of hear the tea about what are the good places to work at. You can apply to places with your friends and also which places you should just stay the hell away from. I'm going to major in information sciences. Do you know how the atmosphere for STEM classes is and how competitive the environment is? How competitive the class is? I've heard rumors of people in STEM classes being cutthroat. Well, yes, I would say it's pretty safe to assume that anything related to like STEM engineering is going to be relatively tough. But for my personal experience, I don't know if I would use the word competitive to describe them. At least personally, I never really felt like I was trying to beat the other students in the class. I felt like all of us were just trying to beat prairie learning. Some classes are very competitive in seating though, especially for classes that everyone has to take as prerequisites. Apparently what people will do, and actually I did this once too, is that they'll just go to class anyways, even though they're not registered, and just sit on the floor like it's a huge fire hazard, just students everywhere, and then just wait for some of the other students to test out and be able to drop the class so seats will open up. So in that regard, it can be competitive. I don't know, I'm sure it also may be a different story when it comes to like higher level classes. I only took one 400 level CS course, and honestly, it was really chill. It was pretty fun and interesting, but it also was a 498 course, which is a special topics, which means that it's like an elective course. So the professor is normally more interested in the subject and is also not so strict about things. Still, I didn't personally experience this. So anyone who's watching this who's in STEM, if you have any opinions, please leave them down below. Let me know. However, for anyone who is not sure about their major or is still worried about whether or not it's going to be a good fit, just remember that there's absolutely no shame in changing your major. That leads us into our next question from Yasmin. How easy is it to switch to a different major or school? For example, I didn't get to my first choice of business, but I put global studies as my second choice and got in even though I have no interest in studying global business. But people have been telling me I could switch over later. Would that be a difficult process? This question also goes hand in hand with Milani's question. Supposedly is in-state tuition free, is it? And is it hard to get into your original major if you weren't selected for it? For in-state tuition, yes, it is. If you are in-state and your family income is below 
this. For changing your major, obviously it depends on the major. I have heard that it's slightly harder to get in if you switch later on rather than coming in as a freshman with that major, but it's certainly not impossible. Just make sure you have a plan. If you come in undecided or know that you for sure want to switch your major, then you just better be making the most of your time before you get into your desired major. Switching into business, however, is a little different. They make it a little bit trickier, but even so, I've seen plenty of people switch their majors even to business without a problem. The thing with business, and I'm not 100% familiar with this, but they do have a slightly different system where you can only switch at a very specific window. I think it's some point during your sophomore year and if you miss that window then you missed it. You can't switch it anymore. So because of that when you know that's coming up you really need to be on top of it working with your advisor to make sure you don't miss it and you have everything in order for that time. I would definitely try rushing some business grads. I know that as a freshman most people don't get in because majority of people don't even get in on the first time rushing but it's great networking, great practice and there you could actually meet some real business majors unlike me who have done this before and can give you some more specific advice. How many out-of-state students did you know? Because I live in Texas and I know with our state schools, it's a little harder to get in if you're coming from a different state. How competitive is the business school? What do students do for fun off campus? Okay, for out of state, I definitely knew plenty of out of state people. For some reason, 99% of them come from the Bay Area of California. It definitely will depend on your major because I know the School of Business and the Computer Science or just Engineering is a lot more competitive, but honestly, as long as you're qualified, I don't think it should be a problem. But I do know that they're trying to admit more and more freshmen each year, so in a way, it actually makes it less competitive. As for what people do for fun off campus, to be honest, I don't think people really go off campus and have fun that much. I feel like all the fun is on campus because that's where like everyone is. The further and further you go off campus, that's like closer to like cornfield territory. But I can't think of a few things. Number one, Curtis Orchard. You have to go there around October, November and take really cute Instagram photos at least once in your four years. Everyone does it. Two, honestly, the food in Champagne is really, really good. I think that the food there, and I know I'm not the only one, is better than out here in the suburbs. There are a lot of great restaurants on campus, but if you want to venture out there, if you're a little foodie, you should definitely check out downtown Champaign. Three, shop for cheap groceries. County Market, it's 24 seven, which is nice, but it's a little expensive. So if you have an older friend with a car, definitely go out to Walmart to buy some cheap groceries. That's where I always went, or Aldi. Or you could go to Harvest Market, which I know some people like to study at, but that's like for bougie people. I would never buy food there, but it is a nice environment. Four, B-dubs. Five, sometimes people will go way off campus and drive up to Chicago to go for a rave for the night. I do that a couple times, so that's pretty fun. If anyone else has any other ideas, let me know in the comments, but I also made a whole video about what to do for fun in Urbana Champagne that you can check out there. It's also linked in the description. I was wondering if you could talk a little about your stats in high school and things you did in your college application process to have an edge, and maybe if you know anything you wish you did to get an easier. Also, how bad is the weather? All right, so I can't remember if I've already said this in a video or not, but you may have noticed I don't really talk about the application process for UABC because the truth is, I don't remember anything from the application process. I like blacked out during that year. I don't have any useful advice because I legitimately don't remember what I did, but I can tell you about my stats from high school. <laughs> you know, I actually paid to get my high school transcript so I could see how I did because I was curious and my grades are actually even worse than I remember. <laughs> I paid a whole $5.40 for this, okay? Don't say that I'm not dedicated to my channel. All right, so my GPA was a 3.77, which is weighted. I got a 32 on my ACT, and I never took the SAT, so I don't know what my score is. Honestly, my grades were not exceptional, but I did have a pretty stacked resume extracurricular-wise. If you're curious about what I did, this is all the stuff I was involved in. Now, I know this may sound like a lot, but I promise you a lot of these things sound a lot cooler than they actually are or actually not that much work. If you're still in high school and still working on the application process, just get involved in anything you find vaguely interesting and take up a leadership position if possible. Learning how to market yourself is one of the most valuable lessons that you will learn in your life in order to be successful. And this is your first shot at doing this for real. You need to know what makes you stand out and what value you bring. Honestly, in my opinion, I never did any clubs like model UN or like that's the only club that I can think of that it sounds really boring to me. But like, I never did any clubs because I thought it would look good on my resume and only for that reason. I was only in clubs that I was genuinely very interested in. And that's because in my opinion, especially because this is not the Ivy Leagues here, okay? Not to talk down about UAUC, it's a great school, but let's be honest. I think when it comes to extracurriculars, what's actually important is not the title of the club, but the traits that they show about you, your dedication, your growth, being a self-starter. For example, you can show your dedication by being involved in the same organization for a long time but you can show your growth there by you know taking up leader positions and kind of moving up. Even more impressive, if you start your own club, start your own business, show that you're a self-starter. You know, it's really ironic because <laughs> the truth is UAC actually almost rescinded me.
So stats wise, I wouldn't say that mine were outstanding. As you can see from my transcript, grades are not everything. So hopefully that is reassuring to some of you guys. I really love this last question though. What did you wish someone told you before going, which would convince me to go or not to go? So I didn't get to visit campus before I committed to UAUC, which I know a lot of you is probably in the same boat because of COVID. I feel like I didn't completely realize how big of a school UAUC is. And because of that, there is a 100% a community for everybody. I went to a pretty big high school, like 4,000 people, I think, which is pretty big, but I still feel like my whole life, I never really found my like right community or found lifelong friends. Even now, I don't have a single friend that I kept from high school and that's kind of sad and I'm kind of jealous of people who do have that. Looking back now, I think that it was just, I wasn't in the right environment in order for me to thrive, but I was 100% able to find that U of I and pretty quickly too. There is definitely a place for you. You just have to find it. And honestly, they make it pretty easy for you because with how social everybody is and how good everyone is about recruiting for their RSOs, I don't even think it's that hard to find your right community. I think I probably took part in like 0.01% of all the activities that they have going on around UAUC and I feel like I was really busy socially. What I love about the campus is that it's a college town. So 90% of the people that you meet, you know, just at the library, in restaurants, at the gym, everyone you meet is like a student in the same exact boat as you. What I also love about campus is that it's a perfect mix between like a suburb and city feel. Compared to the city, it's very peaceful and naturey, but it's like a city in the way that it's laid out so that everything that you could possibly need is within walking distance and there's a lot of people that you can meet, but you don't have to deal with the high stress and fast paced and scary roads. I'd say the only thing I don't like about UC is legitimately the weather. I grew up in Illinois, like I've been experiencing this weather all my life, but because on campus you're walking around everywhere, you really feel the weather that much more. Something that may have actually strayed me from going to the school though and this is something that i only realized just last year it's that if you go to school somewhere you're probably going to stay there for me my plan after graduation was always to move out to california but that just didn't happen because one all of my friends are here it doesn't really make sense for me to just leave right away especially when i spent all this time building up these relationships with these people i'm not just gonna like fly away and ditch them just so i can be in the middle of nowhere by myself and that goes for people who came from out of state too i think if you came from out of state it is more likely that you might just move back to your home state but a lot of people i know actually ended up moving to Chicago and that's where everyone just works full time now. Just know that if you have a plan to end up in a certain state, then it would help you a lot if you go to college in that same state if possible. That is the one thing that if I knew ahead of time, I probably would not have chosen UAUC, but still no regrets. Next question is from Shining Moon. How is the study abroad scene at UAUC? Do you have personal experience or know of anyone who does? How was it? Would you recommend and how easy would it be to get one, especially for Asian countries? Thank you and I love your videos. They're so helpful and fun. Thank you so much. Okay, well, I personally do not have study abroad experience, but I have a friend who did study abroad and I asked for her advice. This is from my lovely friend Cindy. She gave a very detailed response, so thank you so much, Cindy. Studying abroad at UIC is pretty common and honestly very encouraged, although the process for applying will depend on which college or major that you're in. If you personally think you're ready to take out an entire semester from your college years to live and learn in another country, it's honestly an irreplaceable experience. You get to have fun and make friends in a place that you otherwise never would have come to know. Do keep in mind that there are a limited number of courses offered abroad, so only come into this if you're confident that you have flexibility in your course schedule and you're not cramming in classes to graduate. Studying abroad is great, but the reality is, is that you might take some gen ed pass fail courses just to fill up your credit hours and not really end up learning too much for your major. Coursework aside, the travel experience you'll get is unforgettable. It's different than just taking a vacation where you go somewhere for two or three weeks. You'll literally be living in a different country for five to six months and even within that country, you'll be traveling a lot. Cindy studied abroad in Italy, but ended up visiting England, Denmark, Sweden, France, Spain, and a whole bunch of other places that she never even thought about. UAC offers multiple study abroad programs in many countries, so going to Asia is definitely possible. She knows people who went to Hong Kong and Singapore, so talk to your counselor or advisor about those options. Next, we got a lot of questions about housing. I don't know if you guys have already picked dorms already. I'm so sorry if this video is coming out too late. It probably is. I'm really sorry. Okay, so let's just have a whole dorming roommates 101. I wouldn't say that there's any best dorm. I personally have a bias towards the six pack because I lived at Weston and I really liked it. I think it's a great location because it's so close to the Ike. ISR is also a great location because it's so close to the quad and the union. Also, ISR got like a major makeover recently. So if you live there, you'll be lucky. FAR and PAIR is low key kind of lit. Like even though they have the very big con that they're very far away, I think it's still a pretty great place to live. There's a lot of people there. It's very lively. The dorm food there is pretty good. And it's also like the end stop for most bus routes. So there's always buses there. 
there. Honestly though, as long as your dorm has AC for just like the first three weeks of school and the last three weeks of school, I don't think the dorm itself really has that much of an impact of your dorm experience. It's a lot more has to do with your roommate, which leads me into finding a good roommate. I chose my freshman year roommate, so we went to the same high school together. That's why I don't really know firsthand how the roommate matching system works. I do believe they do the same kind of thing where they have like a little questionnaire and they'll kind of randomly match you up that way. But bro, doesn't it feel kind of risky? If you do end up with a bad roommate, it could go one of two ways. One, you were randomly matched with them by the university, so you can blame the system for ruining your dorming experience. Or two, you choose someone either because you knew them from before or you found them on Facebook, but they turn out to be crazy and then you have no one to blame but yourself. It just depends which way you want to go. I've heard roommate horror stories from any situation. People who are best friends in high school and decide to root for each other, or if they were randomly matched by the university, or they found someone on Facebook and they turned out to be crazy. There is no guarantee. No one is safe. If you do try to find a roommate on Facebook though, I do have a couple tips. Find someone who's also interested in possibly joining the same clubs as you, because that way you guys might have some mutual friends. Two, Talk to them for a little longer than just, you know, an initial get to know you. And also lay down any ground rules and expectations for rooming together before you guys commit. Set those boundaries as early as possible. And if it doesn't seem like it's gonna work out, just cut your losses and find someone else. You'll come to learn very quickly that it's pretty hard to find someone that's good to live with. The most important thing for compatibility is that you guys share similar lifestyles. That's why I think it's easiest if you room with your friends from your clubs because you guys are more likely to share the same lifestyles, be going to the same parties, have the same friends. The more that your lives match up, the easier things will probably be. As long as you know that you won't get sick of this person. As for price, yes, dorming is very expensive. Honestly, it's a fucking scam. You see, don't, don't sue me. me. But they require you to have a dorm and the dining plan for freshman year, so it's not like you really have a choice in the matter. They're just so money hungry, whatever. Definitely just move out to apartments as soon as you can. Everyone that I know who decided to stay in dorms for sophomore year regretted it, okay? Don't get trapped in the system any longer than you have to. You can get a way better deal. You have way more freedom. You don't have to share a bathroom with an entire floor of random people. You can cook. You can walk around in your underwear, even though some people already do that anyways. Police won't just randomly come and patrol in front of the entrance on random nights for whatever reason. If you want to save money on housing, apartments is definitely the way to go. And there are a few tactics to get a better deal. Number one is to look as soon as possible. Some people sign their leases as early as October of the year before, which may seem early, but this is just to get the best deals because those go really, really fast. Two, you'll get cheaper rates the further away that you live from the quad or green street. If you don't mind walking an extra 10 to 20 minutes to class. This is a really great deal. You'll save a lot of money this way. Just make sure that your apartment building is close to a good bus stop. A good bus stop should at least have a 22 north slash 22 south there. That one's good because it comes every like eight to 10 minutes. Some bus stops only have buses that rarely ever come or they never go to any places on campus that are like actually like places that you want to go. And of course, obviously living with roommates. The more roommates you live with, the more money you'll probably save because you're splitting things like utilities, internet, sometimes even groceries. Overall for dorms, again, I'm so sorry that the video came out too late and you guys already picked, but the point is is that it doesn't really matter which dorm you end up in. Mostly all of the dorms locations and the quality of them are comparable. It's more about your roommate experience, so just make sure that you set those boundaries ahead of time. You guys communicate well and if there ever is a problem, don't be passive aggressive. Your RA will also be super helpful for this. Just be considerate. That's the bottom line. And also know that if it's really not working out, no matter what you try, it is possible to request a change. And from Jennifer, I love watching your videos on YouTube and I would like to ask you about your experience majoring in advertising at UOUC. What are some of the pros and cons as well as what to look forward to? Okay, well, let's start with the cons. The College of Media is not funded in the same way that the engineering school is. None of the liberal arts majors really are. So you're gonna be dealing with a lot more like rickety old buildings. In case you haven't heard, the English building is haunted by the way. I don't even believe in ghosts, but I believe that it's haunted. So some of the lecture halls, the seats are like so cramped that you really you have to get into people's personal space in order to get to your desk. So that's a really good reason why you should get to class early because that is always an uncomfortable part of big classes. But honestly, for the longest time, I thought that was normal until one day I visited the engineering quad and that place looks like it doesn't even look as part of UAUC's campus. But honestly, that's really it. The advertising program at UAC is really, really great. I really like all the professors. And then there's also AAF, which is the American Advertising Federation, which is like actually super legit. Especially at UAUC, our chapter of AAF is like nationally recognized as being like really really good. The biggest thing to look forward to is the Sandage project. That's gonna be your senior capstone course. The professor I had was Shahar Marone so if you can take the class sign up for him because he is so good. Like, he's probably one of my favorite professors that I've had at UAC. From Samuel. I'm from South Korea, lived in the states for nine years though and got accepted to the Geese College of Business. I don't know if I should join a frat. Some say it's the best thing to do in college because I won't be able to get into frat parties if I don't join and I won't have connections. Some say that I shouldn't join because I won't be able to focus on my grades because of all the mandatory events and I will get a bad reputation 
reputation at college like oh sam that frat boy haha -ha. <laughs> that is so true <laughs> I love how aware you are because that is exactly how people talk. Okay, yes, there are definitely pros and cons to Greek life, but here is my take on it. College is about finding your right community. So if you go to Rush and you find the community in one of these frats, then why should anyone's opinion stop you from joining that? First of all, why do you even care what other people think about you? If you like it, you should do it. If you don't, look elsewhere. Simple as that. Your reputation has a lot more to do with your character as a person rather than the organization that you're a part of. And if there are people out there who want to judge you based on things that they've only heard about you or because of the organizations you're in, then that's their problem. Yes, it is nice to always have an invite to parties, but that definitely is not the main pro of joining Greek life. Please don't join Greek life if that's your main reason, because I promise you there are other places that you can drink. There are so many other better pros to Greek life that have nothing to do with drinking. For example, you actually learn a lot about professionalism. I actually didn't learn most of my business or work-related skills or leadership from my classes or from my other clubs. It was actually from Greek life. It's also a really comfortable place for you to try out new roles. For example, I'm a horrible dancer, like embarrassingly horrible horribly bad, but I joined the dance team at my sorority because I just felt safe there. I know these people are not judging me. You can also go for exec board or be a committee leader and then that way you can get some really good leadership experience but there's a lot less pressure because you're working with all of your friends. It's not really the same as if you were going to be president of some organization that you know you're not really that comfortable with. You don't actually even know everyone in the club. By the way everything I just said is based on my own personal experience of being in Asian Greek life. There's just part of the United Greek Council which can be quite different from the other three councils. If you're interested in Asian Greek life or rushing I made a whole long ass video about that. It is specifically about sororities but if you were interested in Asian frats, a lot of the things I talk about do still apply. Okay, and that is all the questions. Thank you guys all so much for submitting your questions and thank you for sticking around to the end. If this video was helpful to you in any way at all, I would really really appreciate it if you would hit the like button. Also subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon to be notified of my future videos. Let me know what you guys want to see next and if you have any more questions, my comment section and my DMs on Instagram are open. See you guys in my next one. <laughs> oh no!